Hello, 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 and welcome to Mathematically Yu-Gi-Oh, where we discuss the numbers. And today's numbers we're discussing is Psy Frame Gear Gamma and whether or not it's worth it in your deck as a staple. But first, let's use other staples as a comparison in the baseline uh, to draw the line to see if Gamma is worth it or not. So to start, I got these data from TCGPlayer.com. This is the win ratios in the Master Duel's current season. You can see here that these hand traps are running from about a 50 to 55 percent win ratio infinite and permanent so having a bad day these staples are though pretty good for the most part if you use them you're more than likely to win than not infinite and permanence is a particular subject though i might want to investigate that another time why is that not over 50 percent but that's for another time this episode is all about side frame gear gamma and what is gamma's win ratio oh my gosh if my glasses is on correctly <laughs> That says 60.52 win ratio. That is deceivingly high. And I will tell you right now, we should not take that at its face value. And that's why sometimes looking at win ratio is not a good indicator of card is good or not. We're going to go more in depth. But first, let me tell you why this is not a good uh, usage of win rate. And that's because Cyframe Gear Gamut has recently found itself in a home called Super Heavy Samurai, especially in Master Duel, where their win ratio is well above 60%. Uh, they recently did get a nerf, a little slap on the wrist to Soul Piercer to 2 in Master Duel formats, and that's why Gamma being used in there heavily, by the way, is its numbers being inflated. So it is Gamma's real win ratio number. Well, it's about a 54.86. Why? This is the number before Super Heavy Samurai was in the game, and this is more in line to what I think its win ratio should be. Uh, but remember, this isn't Master Duel. This is where it's being run at 2 and i want to also talk about ocg tcg and what about if it can be run at three and what it's i expect its win ratio to actually be we're going to go very in depth and discuss that but before we can go in depth let me go back and talk about some nuanced things and just uh some things of why gamma is so powerful in the first place so for those of you that don't know gamma is a hand trap a staple that can be special summoned when your opponent uses a card effect and you control no monsters basically you can special summon both gamma and this driver from your hand deck or graveyard and if you do you negate that in the activation and destroy that monster now driver over here sometimes there's a chance you draw driver and you don't draw gamma when you draw driver i always feel like mar from home alone when he says yeah, you don't want to see driver. Drivers uh, can 99% of the time it's a hard brick. Maybe 1% of the time it helps you out. And like to get out of it, there can be only one situation or you're being stun locked somehow. But otherwise, you do not want to see driver. And gamma, on the other hand, if you see that, especially on your turn, you could do uh, an effect like you use sin for spoils. If you have gamma in your hand, they use max C. What I like to do is I take both of them, I use gamma, negate the max C, and then uh, both of those guys come in the field and I synchro summon a two and an eight. Gamma is a tuner, by the way. I forgot to mention that. And I go into the Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon. He's got a lot of attacks, but basically all you need to know is I just bring back gamma with him. That's really his only effect. And then with Gamma and Stardust Dragon, I go into a rank, uh, rank 10, a Synchro 10, but on the floor. Which is another negate on top of everything that we just did. So not only do we negate their hand trap, we get the combo off with our card. And we have another negate and around the floor on the floor. And that's why Gamma is so powerful. But is it worth it because we have to run the Brick Driver? Well, let's see. What are the percentage of seeing Gamma over Driver? To determine this, I did what's called hypergeometric probability, and that is the odds of seeing gamma over driver. It's actually a lot more simpler than it looks, and these are the raw numbers. I'll convert into percentages for uh, to make it easier on the eye. Uh, some people do like raw numbers, so I just wanted to show them that. Uh, and it's actually a lot easier to explain than you think. Uh, so, running it at one, two, or three copies. If you're on that one copy, you're either going to see Driver or you're going to see Gamma. One and one, 50% chance. Very easy, very easy math. We all get that. Uh, two copies, you're running two, drive, uh, two Gamma, one Driver, two thirds, 66. But wait, why is that 65%? Why is it not 66.666 repeating, of course, percent chance of seeing it? Well, that's because there's a very small chance that you see Gamma and Driver in the same hand when i did my hyper uh geometric probability uh that's how why that number comes up and it's slightly smaller than 66.6 .6. 
And same thing with uh, running it at three. You'll see why it is under 75%. You know, you got three fourths. You're running three ammo, one driver, three fourths. It's going to be a little bit under uh, 75 because you can see them both. Now, when I compute that and where uh, seeing gamma is a success, seeing drivers a failure and your laddering or tournaments, there's different numbers and different amounts. We want to see more successes and failures. When we're laddering, we want to go for an above 50% success ratio of seeing gamma over driver. That's because we also want to have an above 50% win rate when we're playing against friends, casualing or laddering. In tournaments, however, they're best two out of three. So you do want to see gamma over driver more than 66% of the time for it to be worth it. So that means if we're playing TCG OCG where it's only limited to one uh, laddering, it's, it's a coin flip whether or not it's worth it or not because you're going to see it about 50% of the time. So it, it, it's up to you if you want to use it or not. It's a coin flip. And in tournaments, you should not use it because you're only going to be seeing it about 50% of the time. It is not worth it in tournaments in the TCG OCG formats where it's limited to one or limited to one format. If it gets moved to two, which is the current master dual format, and you can use that two copies, well then laddering uh, and you're using gamma, well, it's a go. If you're playing casuals or laddering, definitely feel free to use gamma there. Uh, you'll be seeing it at 65% of the time. And then tournaments, it's a coin flip there because you're going to be seeing it, remember, about two thirds anyways. But there's a little asterisk I want to call to attention what I call the gamma paradox. I will discuss that in a second. Uh, but I just quickly want to discuss what happens if we play it at three copies. If let's say it gets unbanned and we're allowed to run it at three, well, then we're running at three copies. All hands are a go. It's 72% chance to see a 73. And that means it's great for laddering, great for tournaments. And it's no doubt that is why Konami knew that. And that is why they limited it to one and two in different formats, respectively. So anyways, what was this? Uh, yeah, let me go back. What I was talking about, there's another asterisk there for tournaments. I call it the gamma paradox and what is the gamma paradox let's get these numbers out of here and talk about the gamma paradox well you're playing in a tournament and a lot of tournament players are a lot better than your casuals so you have your gamma in your hand there it is doop to doop to doop and you're gonna play your uh sinful spoil snake eye and they have um, i'm gonna use maxi as an example we're playing a master duel let's say and you're gonna use snake eyes well they're not gonna use their maxi they're not gonna use it they're gonna hold it because they know gamma is a possibility so they're gonna wait till there's a monster on the field so what does that mean that means that gamma's not a good card get it out of here take it out of your deck you shouldn't use it even if it's at three copies because they're gonna play around it anyways good player will play around it don't matter what the math says get him out of here. Well, is that really the case because then what happens is uh, players are playing these meta decks and they get the special summon deal bell star and cash tier for free and they get an, an, this special summon for free too because people are holding the maxi remember because they're respecting their opponents so they're holding the maxi and then people just keep special summoning deal bell star and cash tier fenrir and so they start saying hey you know what nobody's playing gamma anyways so they start shotgunning maxi blind in the draw phase which well if they start doing that well then hey uh gamma is good again because they're blind shotgunning these maxis to try to prevent the cash tier offenders gamma is good again and you can see how we got the paradox right and the cycle repeats itself so i just wanted to, to bring attention to that if even if for some reason gamma gets uh put to three and you do want to run it in tournaments just do be aware of this gamma paradox where it may or may not be good depending on what the meta is uh, so that's also good to know with the numbers as well and that's all i have for today i really wanted to thank you guys for deep diving with me into this gamma segment i look forward to seeing your comments what you guys think about this uh below uh, before this we also talked about uh the optimal number of hand traps in your deck and how much you should run uh that was my first video i made on the topic of mathematically Yu-Gi-Oh, and you guys made a great suggestions and numbers we had a great discussion you guys told me to invest in the mic i did uh, so hopefully the audio in this video is much better than what it was in the last one and i also wanted to say i am so happy in this Yu-Gi-Oh community i can't believe uh how many number files there are with me that like to get into numbers and that share the love for numbers with me i i really do enjoy this and and just the uh, overwhelming love i've got from the community uh i was sharing this video i thought was going to be with like a, just a handful of like maybe 50 people i guess the youtube algorithm showed it to a bunch of people and i've got an overwhelming amount of support so i just wanted to say thank you thank you guys 
thank you to the Yu-Gi-Oh community uh please give your suggestions below yeah and if you like this video subscribe for more uh but i look forward to discussing with you gamma in the comments i tried to discuss with as many people uh in the comments below too in the last video we were getting to some really rigorous discussions about numbers and all that everyone was making great it's a really great discussion i i think you guys should check it out um but yeah no give me your and also if you have suggestions for what for numbers and stuff that you want to see in future videos please leave it in the comments below i am so excited to see what we have in store and what more future videos we can come up with together i have some ideas and i'm working on some other videos and i can't wait to show them to you guys and and i will and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching